Hello and welcome to another episode of Dragon Tech Talk. Today we'll be going through the review of the HD 787E Power Cooler Vortex 2 Edition graphics card. This card is truly brilliant. I must admit I upgraded for my 6870 because it was just far too hot and not really playing too well in a sense. This card is astounding. On idle, you're getting about 22, 23 at the hottest. On complete full, you may be looking 65, 70. On my old XFX Black Edition 687E, you'd be getting maybe about 110 full load. It was a very, very hot card. This is, of course, the Dual Fan Edition. It has been slightly overclocked, and we're going to be showing off some games such as Crisis 2, which are on now. Also, we're doing a bit of Batman Arkham City. And of course, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, all unmodded, just to show how well this runs. We are recording with Fraps, so the frame rate is going to be locked slightly. As you can see, there's the settings for everything at the moment. The advanced settings are up here. Everything is on except for motion blur. The reason I turn off motion blur is for one simple reason. I just don't feel the game needs it whatsoever. I am using the Microsoft certified Xbox 360 pad for PC. Even though I can use a normal everyday Xbox 360 pad, I can't really honestly see the difference other than one says PC and one doesn't. So yeah, let's get started shall we? I must admit as well, the power consumption of this card is next to nothing. It requires a 500 watt power supply and two 6 pin power connectors. Again, the same as a 687E, so all you're doing is really upgrading to a much more powerful cooler card. Right, so as you can see, so far, everything's looking good. So right now, nano vision, absolutely everything's going. Particle effects are going, everything's just really going for it. And the frame rate hasn't dropped below 24 frames yet. Even doing that, again, everything seems to be absolutely dandy. Let's do a couple of the bullet shots. Not a single drop in frames whatsoever. This has literally just more or less gone, you know what, screw it all, keep firing. You got the muzzle flash, absolutely everything, there's nothing wrong. It just seems to literally sit there and go, uh, we'll keep going. So far the fan, I honestly can't hear a thing. I would truly honestly think right now that the fan isn't even running. I'm trying to shoot this little git, and he keeps running away. So again, as you can see, this is just literally playing Crisis 2 as though nothing is wrong. This is all, again, full settings. Everything is all set up perfectly. I can't understand truly see a problem here. This game looks absolutely fantastic. Saying that it's two years old, Crisis 3 is just recently coming out. It has come out in the US, but being in the UK at the moment, we're not going to get Crisis 3 until Friday, which is kind of a pain. I would love to review that one as well. So as you can see just here, everything seems to be running absolutely smooth as anything. It does seem to be a tiny bit laggy on the old audio there. I don't know if this is because my sound might be a bit bad. I don't know if it's because it's the actual game. I'll have to sort that out myself later. But yeah, everything seems to be looking absolutely smooth and dandy. Which is absolutely brilliant. This is what we need. As you saw there, running around, gunfire, the sounds are shooting. Absolutely everything. Nothing dropped that frame rate below 24. It probably will go much higher if I wasn't recording with raps. But yeah, the frame rate is just locked perfectly. Oh, don't you hate loading screens? These are the most annoying things in gaming. Now in the comment section, while I'm doing this, I want anyone to put down the most annoying loading screen times of how long it is, what the longest one, the shortest ones have ever been. And I don't want that Tony Hawk game one where there was no loading screens, and I don't want Mass Effect's loading of in the elevator, because everybody knows that was the most boring thing in the history of humankind. 
As you can see, at the moment there's loads going on, the frame rate is barely dropping, it's all holding pretty smooth. Yep, frame's just moving like there's absolutely nothing wrong. So as you can see, this is part of the trailer that we originally saw. So yeah, let's just watch this bit. No single frame drop, and this is on DirectX 11. Everything is still running at pretty much 24 frames a second. There is no problems whatsoever. I didn't even see it, all the deaths, absolutely everything is just pretty much smooth, silky, no problems, visuals look brilliant. I've also turned on the anti-aliasing mode on my graphics card in the countless control suite. I put it on enhanced AA, so of course the anti-aliasing is also being pushed by this card as well. But as you can see though, everything looks fine, it's running smooth, let's just shoot this barrel if I can. <laughs> I wasn't doing a review, I'd be a much better shot, I swear. I'm not lying, I will be. But yeah, everything seems to be truly perfect. Oh. <laughs> no, I wasn't doing a review, I'd have been able to see that. But yeah, these frames have not dropped and torched. The game looks visually stunning in this. There's no real jagged edges of what I can see whatsoever. Shadows look smooth. Which is a problem for a lot of games on consoles, they just don't look very smooth. Right, so what we'll do is now, we'll quickly quit out of here. You'll probably see a black screen for a few seconds or so while I just load up the next game, but it's only natural. So the next one we'll be going for is Batman Arkham City Game of the Year Edition. Just gotta wait for it to load up as always. Oh, good thing about Steam is that I don't need to put in CDs every five seconds. That's why I like Steam. Otherwise, I've been here for ages and had to edit all this out. You won't want that. You want to see the full raw review footage. Of the 7870. Again, the fans as well. I don't know if you can hear it or not with this microphone. You might be able to, but I'm sat about five, six foot away from this PC right now. And I'm literally hearing maybe a tiny bit of fan noise. On my old one, it was literally like listening to a hairdryer blowing 24-7. I had to add two external fans on top and below of the graphics card to make sure it was cool. It was not very good at all. Now, the good thing about Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, they are very, very well optimised, which is brilliant. At the moment I seem to be getting about 45 to 60 frames a second, which my fraps is bloody locked on. Which is always a good sign. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick benchmark. I don't know why I just clicked there, it went a bit too quick. So yeah, I'm going to do a quick benchmarking here. The only problem is though with the Batman Arkham series so far is that it's only set up for NVIDIA cards on the physics. Which is kind of a bit of a pain if you want to get the absolute maximum out of your graphical detail. But that would mean then going to NVIDIA's graphic cards and buying something like maybe a 660 or a 670 to get the absolute best out of its physics. But again, that would just give you some extra little eye candy and a lot more stuff going on in your game. Again though, I'm not really biased towards anything as I always say. AMD and NVIDIA both do absolutely brilliant graphic cards. It's just that I've always liked AMD slightly more just because it's a touch bit cheaper and I've been with AMD for a long time. I did use to have an old NVIDIA card. Great thing. But again, we're reviewing the 7870 power cooler here. Not NVIDIA. So as you can see, at the moment the frames have just literally not dropped whatsoever. The maximum to the minimum all seem to be about right. I have V-Sync enabled, so the maximum the average can go to is usually 60. That is what it locks at. I only have V-Sync on 9 out of 10 times because I just don't like the screen tearing of games. It makes them look a bit... Well, should I say it makes them look a bit ugly. 
Especially when you're running around, all you can see is your screen tearing all the time. So yeah. But again, running with fraps, I'm getting the usual 60 frames. So I'm just thinking, without fraps on, I might even be pushing much, much higher frames per second. Also, as you can see as well, the graphical detail is all set to ultra high. Anti-aliasing is set, I believe, two, maybe four. And this game just looks truly brilliant. Right, that should be the end of the benchmarking. Yes, it is. I don't know why this doesn't like to escape. There we go. It just seems to really like that screen when I do that benchmarking. So, yeah, let's get into a quick bit of the story. Quickly show some gameplay. It is at the pretty much the very start of the game, so nothing will be spoiled. I have completed this game on the Xbox 360 along with Crisis 2. It's just that I've got them on the PC and I've never really got around to playing them. All great games, I will admit, right now. So, as soon as it's loaded, right, let's get to the gameplay. As you can see at the moment, there's a tiny bit of delay and lag, but that's only natural for the game to try and load up. So, as you can see, everything so far is just running absolutely smooth and getting about 30 frames, 35 frames a second. You've got to remember, this is running with fraps as well. So, any higher frames wouldn't be um, a lot better for me, but that doesn't matter. 24, 25 frames is in the human eye's natural perception. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find some goons and I'm going to try and beat the crap out of them. Speaking of which, here's them now. So during these combat scenes, everything's running quite fluid. I should have really dodged that. But I haven't played Batman in a very, very long time. So again, as you can see, during these combat scenes, there is, seems to be absolutely no frame drop whatsoever. It's running smooth. And then I seem to be pushing about 50 frames a second. That's what I'll do is, I'll start doing a bit of a run around. Again, have a bit of a fly around the area. But yeah, so far this game is just literally running about 30, maybe 40 frames on average. I think the lowest I've seen it drop to so far is about 20 frames a second, and that's drawing some really intense stuff. Again, this is all on ultra high DirectX 11 settings. Tessellation is on, but that's mainly through the control catalyst suite. So yeah, this game looks absolutely fantastic on this. There's no real frame drops that um, are mildly noticeable. You might have the occasional bad drop, but that happens in any game. This looks absolutely fantastic again. As you can see, AA is also turned on. You can't really see it. Shadows all look absolutely fantastic. This game just looks absolutely brilliant, and this graphic card really helps it out a lot. The power to noise is just outstanding as well. I don't know if I've already said or not, but again, this card only requires 500 watt power supply and two six-pin adapters. Most high-end graphic cards will require this now, but most power supplies also come with it and can handle that quite well anyway. So as you can see, it all runs fine. There's no real frame drops to speak of, and the fan noise is pretty much ultra-quiet, which is brilliant. Not the sort of thing you get with some fans where they're just so loud, but again, being a dual fan, this is really good. It's great value as well. I believe you can get on eBay right now for about 165 maybe £170. Right, let's move on to the next game. I would definitely recommend getting this if you're upgrading. A lot of people have said, if you're thinking about upgrading you're in the market for a new graphics card, go for something like a 7950 before, I would have also recommended that myself, but now the price difference is so big and the fact that this power cooler is overclocked already with some very impressive clocks. I must admit, I would probably go for this one if you're feeling a little more cheaper. If you want to go more expensive, then indeed do go for a 7950, but the 7870e power cooler Vortex 2 Edition is just brilliant. Also, with the dual fans, the two plastic fans actually built onto the car that can actually be risen slightly increasing airflow downwards on the graphics card which I have done 
and I must admit I do notice a slight cooling improvement along with noise. So this is the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Again, everything Ultra, AA on 16, AF on 16. Everything's running at its high settings. There are no mods, but there is the Bethesda High Definition Texture Pack installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this chicken. Why? Because I can. And as you can see, everything just looks truly fantastic. I know I'm mourning this chicken. I don't know why I'm mourning this chicken, but I'm mourning it. I mourn it with sorrow. So again, as you can see, this game just seems to run absolutely fine. Daniel getting about 45, 50 frames a second here. <laughs> that was just... I'm, I'm so sorry. That this has never happened to me before. I'm sorry. But as you can see, the water flow, the textures, even at long distances, look absolutely fantastic. Detailing is really immersed, and again, this graphic card is just literally pulling it through so nicely. About 45, 50 frames average. Was being taken away there by the current, I've noticed. <laughs> again, I have played this on the Xbox 360, completed it all, and I have to admit, the PC version just looks absolutely fantastic compared... I mean, as you can see here, the detailing with the high resolution pack, just everything naturally looks fantastic. This is without mods. I might do another review sometime of Skyrim with a lot of mods on. Just to really show off the power of, well, the graphics card and just what Skyrim can really look like. As a lot of people have already seen. And again, as you can see, if I look down here at the shadows, they are really, really well anti-alien. Anti Shall we just say they're very well de-blocked, because I cannot speak right now. There's a tiny bit of blocking, but again, I have the actual extended on the AA on the CC, which I'll show you in a minute too. That sounds more like a car repair system, the AACC, you know what I mean? AA. Possibly even Canadian. Not that I'm dissing the Canadians out there. Maple syrup. So yeah, as you can see, this game looks fantastic, the foresting looks absolutely brilliant, and again, this graphics card is running it as smooth as anything. When I'm looking out here, I'm getting an average of 30 frames a second. The draw distance and everything else is all also set to full. And yet this graphics card can just literally punch it right in the face and say, eh, screw it. So let's try these. And again... Even with all this running at the same time, it just burns it through like there's nothing. The game looks fantastic. Everything just looks truly brilliant. I would be attacked by a dragon right now, I'm guessing, but because I've just started the game again, it's not going to be very likely. Oh, I got the shroud, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should be reviewing this graphics card, not playing around with the sign on Skyrim. So yeah, as you can see, everything just looks truly brilliant. Again, this is the high definition pack from Bethesda as well, installed and running. Everything on ultra high settings, and this is with Fraps running as well, recording. And it is still just going smooth as anything. Which was pretty much tells me, if I was to play this game without Fraps running, we're going to get a lot more frames. Everything just looks brilliant, again, without mods though. So as soon as I install some mods to this, I will do another review of Skyrim. But all in all, this all looks fantastic. This graphics card is still very quiet. It's running perfectly fine. It's very low wattage. Great for anyone on a budget who wants to get a nice, powerful card which is going to play most games ultra high, all at 1920x1080p. This is a perfect card for you. I would recommend it straight away, I swear down. It is a perfect upgrade. If you're more of an NVIDIA person, that's absolutely fine. I would probably recommend the 660, maybe 670. This is about the competitor to it as well. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to activate my other screen recorder. Which will take me a few seconds if I can ever find out how to get to it again. Just proving how terrible I actually am here. So I need to open up the control suite drive. But you're glad you don't need to see all this, you just hear me talking. You lucky, lucky poor people, you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Recording the front screen, as you can now see. So here is the vision control center. And we go down to performance and go to the overdrive. These are the actual clock speeds right now. So as you can see, 
it can its current clocks are 1150 on the GPU clock on the performance clock it's 1250 megahertz which makes it about 5 gigahertz you can easily overclock this one so as it shows here to much much higher you can enable the manual fan control and you can also change your power control settings so as you're overclocking you can increase the power as well which I do highly recommend if you're going to overclock but take it slowly especially if you have a much higher grade power supply like I do I have a 750 watts so I could easily overclock this still get some powerful stable clocks it runs absolutely extreme in some games. It is amazing. As you can see as well, the aliasing mode is enhanced application. So, of course, all of this can be changed however you feel. I usually have this set to actually off on use application. But, of course, with this card, you can use enhanced. I think this may be a new feature they added with the 7000 series of graphic card. Because the 6000 series, I never got that. So yeah, if you're ever in the market for a graphics card, as I say, check out eBuyer. They're doing the card for about 160, 170 right now. You also get the Never, Se Never Settle Reloaded pack, which gives you Tomb Raider and Bioshock Infinite. I would definitely recommend going out and buying this gay, well, this graphics card, not the game. Buy the new 7870 game graphic card. It's great. <laughs> yeah, this is me, completely unscripted. I swear down, I should really write a script for some of these. So yeah. That has been a review of the Power Cooler 7870 Vortex 2 Edition. I would highly recommend it if you're in the market for a powerful graphics card which is cool, quiet, and doesn't take a lot of power. Hope you've enjoyed this review.